Welcome all, my name is Russell Lewis, and if you're watching this video, it's probably because you got a link from me sent through D2L because you're enrolled in a class that I'm going to be teaching this fall. This fall, 2020, I'm going to be teaching CSC 120, which is our second semester Python intro course, and CSC 346, which is cloud uh, computing. Now, I just wanted to make contact with everybody to let you know at a very rough level what the class policies are going to be like because obviously everybody's very concerned about coronavirus and how are we going to uh, make teaching work in this sort of a scenario. Uh, am I going to have unreasonable requirements that's going to make it difficult for you? I wanted to let you know what's going on. Now a couple of caveats before I do this. When I release this here, this is five weeks before class begins which means that there, there's going to be quite a bit of time where I'm going to fill in the details about how these classes work. I reserve the right to change anything I say here, but I'm going to try to be careful to just say general things in this video that I'm about 95% certain will be true when the semester actually begins. The second caveat you need to know is that I'm not the university administration. I don't have the authority to decide whether a campus is going to be open or closed. I'm not trying to make a policy statement about whether it should be open or closed. I'm simply saying in the range of the things that we're planning to do, the range of the things we might need to do, here's the space of contingencies that we'll be working with. First of all, the question, will the campus be open or closed? Uh, at the time I record this, Arizona is in the middle of uh, a bad spike in coronavirus cases. I don't know where it's going to be in August. I don't know what decision the administration will make. I know the administration very much desires to have the uh, campus open, but they have a very, very high priority of making sure that they can do that safely. So if we can't do this safely, then we're not going to open the campus. Uh, and it remains to be seen exactly what will happen there. We're hoping to open the campus, if not right at the beginning, then as soon as we can. Because the truth is, an online learning environment is just not as good as learning in person. Um, but obviously, it may just be a poor choice to do that at first. Uh, and even if we open the campus, hopefully we will, but even if we open the campus at some point, there will be some significant limitations about how that's going to work. And the university has been in contact with you already and we'll be sending additional emails about policies about how all that's going to work. But we'll talk about that later at the end of this video here. All right, now there's this hope that the university will be open. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But what if you are in a particular position where even if it was open, it wouldn't be a good idea for you to come? Maybe you're a student, an international student, and you're having trouble finding travel arrangements to get back to the university. Um, maybe you've got some sort of a, a situation at home where you don't want to take the risk of bringing something home to your house. Maybe you've got some personal situation yourself where it would not be wise to risk things. Even if we're going to be very careful, it wouldn't be wise for you to be in public. That's fine. I understand that there will be lots of different students with lots of different situations. I also know that in the middle of the semester, things might change for you. We're going to work hard to make sure that people don't get infected, but there will be more than zero people who get infected. What if you get the coronavirus in the middle of the semester? What if you have some sort of other issue, which means you have to transition? I am making the, the mark in the sand right now that says, I'm allowing you to take this class online. Now, this is not an online class in a formal sense. I'm actually hoping that we'll be able to have at least a little in-person lecture time because, frankly, I teach better when I've got people to interact with who can give me direct feedback about how I'm doing. Um, and I think you learn better in a classroom setting because, to be perfectly honest, you're a lot less likely to go look at Facebook if you're looking at someone person to person rather than watching through a video. But 
Uh, if you need to be online, either for the entire semester or you for some space of time, then I will support that modality. Basically what's going to happen is that um, I, I'm hoping to have some sort of some sort of way of checking to see that people are engaged with uh, the lectures. I haven't decided whether I'm going to be doing everything synchronous or if I'll have a recording or exactly how that's all going to work. Um, but I'm hoping, but although I don't know the details, what I do know is that as an online student, you will have access to everything that the regular class can do. You should also expect that there's some form of accountability. I'm still working on the details of how that's going to happen, but some sort of either, either I'll put it up on play pause it or some sort of a quiz mechanism that will confirm that you're actually engaging with the lectures even though you're online. So are you going to be able to just take a vacation when you feel like it and stop showing up to class? No. You're going to have to stay engaged with the class every single week. However, if you have some sort of a, an issue in the middle and you need to be distant while you do it, I'm going to support that. You don't need to worry about that. Hardware requirements. Everyone should be prepared with a good, solid internet connection. They should uh, be prepared with a webcam and a microphone. Again, I haven't worked out the details of exactly what this is going to look like. Um, so I'm, this is kind of, you need to be prepared in case. So you, I'm telling you right up front before class begins, have a webcam and a microphone. It doesn't have to be high quality. It doesn't have to be great. Um, but in if I decide that that's going to be how I'm going to manage some parts of the interaction, I don't want there to be some students who are saying, hey, I don't have that sort of, um, so, sort of facility available. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, okay, classroom policies. The university is doing a lot of work on how to manage the campus situation itself. So there's a number of things that they're working on. First of all, we're changing the rooms that a lot of our classes are going in. So 346 has been moved to a larger classroom that will allow us to have the students in the classroom but maintain six foot distancing. I don't know whether campus will be open or not. I know that we hope it will be, and we want to do it safely if possible. So one of the elements might be that you're in a room, and but where everybody's going to be spread out. This means, of course, I love to do group assignments. I, do, I love to do active learning activities where you go work with your neighbor. We're not going to have any group assignments of that form in this semester. Um, I like to go around during in-class activities and talk with people and help them out with their specific issues. I'm not going to be able to wander the classroom in that way. So we're going to have to work on uh, details of how exactly we're going to do our classroom mechanisms for the people who are in uh, the room. Uh, the other thing that the, well, the next thing that the university is doing is that for a number of classes, and uh, it looks likely that 120 will be this way, 346 might be this way, is that we may need to divide the class up into cohorts. And so what we'd have is we'd have some people show up on one day of the week and other people show up on a different day of the week. That way the total number of people that we have in a classroom at any given moment is small enough that we can maintain social distancing. Um, well, we're still working out the details, but what I want you to know, the key thing that you need to know here out of this, is that the university is not going to pack you in into a traditional lecture hall and have you up close against other students. That's just flatly not what we're going to do. There's a variety of what mechanisms that we're working on to uh, adapt, but that's simply something we're not going to do. Uh, the university is also working on things. I don't know the details, but I'm anticipating that there will be a certain amount of flow control within the halls where you can only move like this hall only goes north and this hall only goes south and certain classrooms will have one door that's an indoor and another door that's an outdoor. Uh, we don't know the details on that yet, but there's there, the university has been actively working on that, so keep your eyes open. 
Expect that there will be a certain amount of traffic control that's specifically designed to help you keep distance from other students as you're going to and from a classroom. Finally, in our room, that you will be required to have a mask or a face shield or something of that sort. And I know that there's a variety of different perspectives, a variety of different opinions about whether masks are a good idea or not. I am not going to make that argument with you, okay? I'm just flatly not going to argue with you. If you come into my classroom, you need to be wearing a mask or a face shield or something equivalent. And no, I'm not going to be fooled by things that have holes in them or anything like that. If you're willing to play the game with masks, then come to the classroom. If you feel like masks are a bad idea, I totally respect your right to have that opinion, but you need to then attend the class virtually instead of physically. That's just a flat requirement I'm going to have. So I think those are the key things you need to know. Key things I wanted you to know out of this is that we want the campus to be open, but we're not going to open it unless we can find a way to make it safe. It might need to transition during the semester, but we're planning ahead right from the beginning about how that's going to work. So it will not be a traumatic thing like it was in March when we all suddenly had to go home. We're planning ahead for that right from the start. If you need to be online permanently, or for a few days. I will have support for that in the class. It won't be a problem. You need to make sure you have an internet connection even if you're planning to attend in person because there will be elements of the class that are probably going to require being online. Classroom policies, we're going to do a lot to manage how, um, how we can do social distancing while still having an open campus, if we have an open campus. And so your job is going to be, first of all, follow the instructions that the university has po posted about how traffic flow is going to be controlled. Don't sit next to people when you're in a classroom. You need to maintain social distancing. And whether or not you can maintain social distancing, a mask is required. If you cannot wear a mask, stay away. All right. I hope that's clear. If you've got anything that you need to follow up on, feel free to email me. I'm willing to, you know, happy to talk to anybody. Um, but hopefully this will answer most of the questions that most people have. My name is Russell Lewis, and I'm looking forward to teaching this semester. I hope you're looking forward to learning a lot of interesting stuff. I'll be seeing you around. Bye-bye.